2016 will be remembered for me as the year when I went 4K or Ultra HD. I got a new 4K television. To go with that, I've got the Sky Q set-top box, which will be 4K later on in, in the year. I've also got some 4K UHD Blu-rays. My 4K Blu-ray player just turned up yesterday, and you might have noticed, if you subscribe to the channel, that some of the videos I've been putting out, the shorter ones, have also been in 4K. But rewind 10 years before now, 2006, Things were quite a bit different. It was the same story, but it was all about HD. I've got a new HD TV, 42 inch 1080i. Sky HD had just been launched. So I got that installed just in time to watch a few of the matches from the World Cup 2006 that the BBC were broadcasting in 1080i. In addition to that, I got a HDV camcorder and there were two different ways in which I could buy films in HD. You've got a choice of either Blu-ray or HD DVD. But if you just go back a few years before then, say to 2002, there was no Blu-ray or HD DVD. The only way early adopters of HD TVs in the US could buy movies in HD was to get them on VHS. Yes, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Well, that was a bit dramatic. Anyway, 1998 HD television arrived in the US, but it was only for the very early adopters and those with deep pockets because the first HD televisions cost $8,000. But as with everything, prices came down over time, and by 2002, reportedly, there were 2 million US households with an HD television. And of course, that creates a demand for movies on a format that you can watch on your HD TV. But the format of choice at the time was DVD. It had come out just a few years earlier. It was a massive runaway sales success, and people really liked it. The only problem was, for the HD TV folk, a DVD doesn't hold enough data to store a full HD movie. Now, on the other side of the coin, we've got good old VHS. This was the previous format. It had been a massive success for Victor, or JVC as they're better known in the West. But they tried to follow it up with improved formats, such as SVHS, which offered approximately twice the quality of VHS, but nobody had really been interested. So then they tried DVHS, which was a way of recording video digitally onto VHS tape. Again, not much interest in that one. Most people were shifting away from tape and moving to PVRs. Those were using the same technology to store video digitally, but putting it on a hard drive, which meant instant access to the programs you wanted, and you could quite easily delete and re-record over it. People weren't that interested in archiving to tape anymore. Of course, the big advantage that good old VHS tape has over a PVR is that it's a portable format, something that you could sell movies on. And DVHS could hold 50 gigabytes worth of data on a single tape and play that back at a rate of 28.2 megabits a second, which is perfect for displaying HD video. So you can see where this is going. We've got a format that could display HD video and we've got the movie studios that want to sell it to you. So DreamWorks, Universal, Fox and Artisan got together with JVC and brought out what they called a new format which was D-Theatre. Now, whilst D-Theatre is on DVHS, it isn't strictly DVHS. You see, you could buy a DVHS machine for a couple of years before D-Theatre came out. But what D-Theatre did, it played the video at the high speed rate, which wasn't on all the old DVHS machines, but it also offered a thing that the movie companies wanted, which was digital copy protection. You see, at the time, everyone was a little bit panicky about the idea of selling HD videos on a format that people could copy. So a lot of talk about encryption and stopping people from copying it. And it actually handicapped the machines a little bit. I'll show you more on that in a moment. But you've got an HD video machine, but you can't exactly do everything that you might want to do with an HD video recorder. Let's just talk about price for a second. In 2002, when the D-Theatre format was launched, JVC brought out two machines that were compatible with it. Those cost between 1500 
and $2,000. Now, as far as the price of the films themselves go, well, the initial launches cost between $35 and $45. Notice two things here. Amongst those titles is Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and at the bottom it says this marks the first time in entertainment history that high-definition movies will be available in a pre-recorded format. They should have really added in the US at the end there, because in Japan, one of those launch titles, Terminator 2, had already been available for nine years on their High Vision Muse Laserdisc format. But that was a very expensive format that didn't really leave Japan, and to be honest, it was pretty much dead by the time D-Theater came out. The D-Theater machine that I'm going to show you is one of those two launch devices that came out in 2002. It's the cheaper of the two, and it's the most common one that you'll find on eBay, and it's the JVC HM DH30000U. Of course, I've imported this from the US because they only came out over there, so it runs on 120 volts, and I'm using it through a step-down converter. This machine outputs HD over component leads. You can see them at the top left here. And you can also see various other analog ins and outs on here. You can record over the antenna in standard definition, of course. If you want to record in HD, though, there's only one way to get HD into this machine, and it's via that Firewire lead at the top right there. And the idea with that is, of course, as I was mentioning before, it's all about copy protection. If you could record HD over component, then you could record HD movies off the TV, and the movie companies wouldn't want you to do that. So copy protection's included on this one, and the only way you can record is via that lead at the top right there, and of course that won't let you record off another D-theater machine. Now, as far as sound output goes, we can send optical out from there, and that's Dolby Digital 5.1 from this machine. And notice it's got a region coding on here, region one. There were no other regions. It only came out in region 1, but there was intentions to have regions 2 and 3. Now you can see here on the ever useful Laserdisc website, they've got a database of all the DVHS releases, and you can see that Terminator 2, which was one of those first batch, came out in June 2002. Now those first titles had a Dolby Digital soundtrack. Now, my machine can play those fine. However, some of the later titles came out with a DTS soundtrack as well. And those could only be played back on some of the later machines or the higher end model, I believe, which was the 40,000U. That was the other one that came out at launch. There were only a handful of D-Theater compatible machines came out during the product's lifetime, but a couple of the later ones had HDMI output on them. And those are the ones that are really favored by the collectors. If we look at a DVHS tape, we can see it's pretty much indistinguishable from a normal VHS tape. In fact, it's actually a SVHS tape, but not many people will be able to spot the difference between them. Looking at this one here, iRobot, this is the last title that came out on the format. So we'll just have a quick look around it. You can see on the side here, it says HD 1080i. And if we look on the back, we can see the specs on it show that this is one of those ones that had a DTS soundtrack as well as a Dolby Digital soundtrack. Now, there's only the film on here. There's no extras or trailers or any of that business or menus or all that kind of stuff. Uh, no, when you buy a D-theater movie, you just get a movie. Quick look inside the machine. You can see it looks just like a VHS machine of the period, other than the fact that it's got quite a bit more circuitry around the back, which will be your MPEG-2 encoders and decoders and all that kind of stuff. But the actual mechanism itself is pretty much your normal VHS. You can see this one was manufactured on the 10th of August 2002. And, oh, hold on a minute. I think I've got a bit carried away with taking this one apart. It's going to take me a couple of minutes to put this one back together again. Oh, there we go. Easy as that. Now, because that format's not all that long ago, you can find still sealed DVHS movies. You can see here's what you get inside the box, just the tape itself. There's no little booklet or anything like that. Pop it in the machine, standard old VHS type mechanism. You do get a little bit of a VU meter on this one to show you that the sound's playing. And also, HS means high speed. That's the mode that the HD movies play in. You can see you've got adjustable modes on the right here and a few different controls on there as well. You could probably hear the noise of the fan over me talking there, and it is quite a noisy device. It seems to have just been bolted on at the back here at the last minute when someone realised this thing was overheating. Now, I've captured a little bit of video over components, and it's from this tape here, which is a demonstration tape which probably dealers would have put in the machines at the time. But the footage that's recorded on it is actually from 1993, presumably recorded for the Japanese HD video demos of the time, and it's of New York and various other things. I've uploaded some of this onto YouTube, I've got a link to it in the video description but the thing about it is it's a little bit soft because 1993 is really pretty early for HD video remember that's 
nearly 10 years before this DVHS D theatre format came out by which time cameras were a little bit better so I've got a few seconds of footage that I recorded off iRobot hopefully this is going to come under fair use because I'm not here to pirate the movie I just wanted to show you the quality of it however if for whatever reason this part is taken down I'm going to have to re-upload this video with this section missing anyway just watch this for a second Right, hopefully that came across at its really good quality, even after it's been captured over component. Now, one thing that these DVHS tapes have, or D-theatre tapes, is that the navigation on them is a little bit basic, to say the least. I've got Galaxy Quest here, and the way that you get through to the different chapters, you get this text on the screen, which is generated by the machine itself. So different machines will have different types of text. But as you can see, you scroll down the list, which appears slowly, and then you pick the particular chapter that you want. The tape will fast forward to it in that kind of noise crazy old way that VHS always did but it will get to the exact right spot every time which I think is pretty impressive when it's going at that kind of speed of course it does slow down a little bit as it gets towards the part on the tape that you need to get to and of course you can fast forward through the video and have it display as a series of sort of freeze frames as you can see here and you can do the same in reverse although it does take a little bit of time for those to start appearing when you're fast forwarding uh, you can't do any kind of trick plays and there's only one speed of fast forward and rewind now I should come clean because not everyone gets my dry sense of humor but you know that machine earlier on well rather obviously that isn't the same machine now I've been trying to put this video together for about a year the first machine I got wasn't working it had a tape stuck inside it but that was the least of its problems the electronics in it had been fried the whole thing didn't work at all so that one had to go in the bin and it was eventually replaced by a second model which is the one that you've seen demonstrated in the video but I noticed even when I look around the back of this one there's a sticker on it that says it's been refurbished so by all accounts these old DVHS machines aren't the most reliable of devices now I've looked at quite a few dead formats but I think D theater had the shortest lifespan of any of them. It would be easy to think that D Theatre was just replaced by HD DVD and Blu-ray, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. You see, the first title that came out on HD DVD was in April 2006. The first Blu-ray was slightly later in June 2006, but the last D Theatre title was a year and a half earlier, all the way back in December 2004. So it's unusual that a format would die before there was anything on the market that could directly replace it. I suppose the idea of tapes was a bit out of date. People didn't want to invest money in tapes again. Now they got used to discs, even if the tapes were in HD. But I think there was also a bit of market skullduggery going on. You see, as soon as the D-theatre format was launched in 2002, various manufacturers and movie studios got together to say that they were working on a new HD format on a disc. This technique of putting people off buying what's currently available with the promise that the future thing's going to be so much better was one that was employed to great effect by Sony just a couple of years earlier when they managed to put people off buying Sega's Dreamcast by overstating the specs on the upcoming PlayStation 2. Whatever the reason for the death of D Theatre, it was clearly never long for this world when HD movies started coming out on discs. However, there are some enthusiasts to whom DVHS itself is still very current. You see, DVHS is really the last great video archiving format, and there are plenty of people out there that like to archive recordings of old television programmes. They're the people that BBC turn to when they realise they've wiped the old episodes of Doctor Who. And some of these people with DVHS machines and archives of tapes will have HD recordings that stretch all the way back to the early 2000s. Now, the only reason that I bought this D Theatre player and these tapes was so that I could demonstrate it to you here in this video. You see, I found the idea interesting and a little bit absurd that there was a period in time, however brief, when the only way that you could buy a film in HD was to get it on VHS. It's a little bit of a break in the space-time continuum. Now, there are collectors of the D Theatre titles. There were only 90-odd different releases on the format, so you'd imagine it would be possible to buy them all. However, some of those were only released in very limited numbers and today command quite high prices on the second-hand market. And I've got to say, unless you were trying to collect them all, there are better ways, or cheaper ways, to buy the same films. You see, 
The titles that came out on the D Theatre format were all the big box office releases of the time, the kind of things that you would use to demonstrate and show off your home cinema setup. And those are the same titles that are still available now to buy on Blu-ray, and those will be a lot cheaper than picking them up on D Theatre. Not to say, though, that it wouldn't be worth picking one of these up if you went in a second-hand store and someone had a player bundled with a load of tapes for a really good price, because the quality that you can get out of these still stands up today. Watching a film on a DVHS tape is probably better in quality than watching it on a broadcast on HDTV from satellite, cable or over the air. You've got a DTS soundtrack or Dolby Digital 5.1, a higher bit rate and of course no adverts and things. So not a bad idea if you can get hold of one at a cheap price, but I think that's pretty unlikely and the players themselves do seem to be a little bit unreliable now as well. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed looking at the D Theatre format and as always, thanks for watching.